Good news! We don't always see much of that, do we? In our newspapers, on our TVs, on our computers. We even talk about fake news these days. But the Christian festival of Easter is all about good news. Which might surprise some people, especially when they hear what happened on Good Friday. It does make some people wonder why Christians call such a dreadful day Good Friday. It seems to be the complete opposite of good. Jesus spent his entire life living out a message. Through his words and his actions, his stories and his miracles, we know this to be called the gospel, which means good news. But I wonder how the Easter story connects to this idea of good news. Let's go back a little bit. If you remember our last time together, we talked about the donkey riding with Jesus into Jerusalem. So let's start the Easter story there. At first, everyone thought it was good fun. It was good news as the crowds gathered along the hillsides to wave and cheer for the new king, the saviour or messiah, their hero. Here was Jesus riding on a donkey getting closer towards the temple of the mount in Jerusalem. As he approached Jerusalem, the cheering got louder and louder. But within a few days, the mood of the crowd would change. Later that week, on the Thursday, Jesus sent his disciples to prepare a room, an upstairs room in a house, for the Passover meal that Jewish people were celebrating at that time of year. Later that evening, in the upper room, in the coolness of the evening, they shared bread and wine as they had many times before and shared the stories of old. But during the feast, Jesus kept talking about his blood being spilt and his body being broken. But it didn't make sense to his followers at the time. After sharing a meal with his friends, he took some of his disciples up to the mountainside to pray in a garden. He knew what was coming and wanted to pray for strength for what he was about to go through. But the disciples, they were still thinking about the good news, thinking that Jesus was the hero king. They were unaware and asleep when the guards started to arrive. Guards came in a big crowd this time led by Judas, one of Jesus' disciples. They came to arrest him with clubs and swords. The guards arrested Jesus and took him away. His own friends, the rest of the disciples, deserted him. Soon he was stood before the Jewish leaders and later P Pilate, the Roman leader of the time, being accused of all sorts of made-up charges. Eventually, the crowd were given a choice to free him or kill him. The crowd, who had been shouting Hosanna to the Messiah, now shouted crucify him, crucify him. Jesus was beaten and whipped. A cruel crown of thorns was made and placed onto his head. A cloak was put on his back and then he was made to carry the wooden beam that would form his death sentence out of the city. As he walked through the streets and the crowd watched him, they were no longer cheering for him. They watched him stumble carrying the cross until he reached a place of execution a hill called Golgotha, or Skull Rock, outside the city. The Roman soldiers then stripped Jesus of his cloak, hammered nails into his hands. And hammered nails into his feet. They hoisted up the cross into the air.
sticking a big sign above it saying King of the Jews. The cross was designed to wear your body out so you couldn't breathe any more. After three gruelling hours, Jesus shouted from the cross, It is finished! and breathed his last breath. The sky turned as black as night as the soldiers and some of his female followers watched him die. One of the soldiers took a spear to check if he was really dead. Then his body was taken down off the cross. It was wrapped in cloths and taken to a borrowed tomb. A large boulder was rolled in front of the entrance of the tomb and guards put there to stop anyone from going near the tomb and doing anything to the body inside. It seemed like it was bad news. The hero king was dead. His friends had all but deserted him as his body lay there in the tomb. The disciples fled. Christ the Saviour was dead. Hope and the message of the good news was gone. Friday ended and Saturday soon passed. Then when it was the Sunday morning, some of the women followers of Jesus made their way to the garden tomb. They were taking myrrh, a perfume to anoint the body with, to make it smell better as well. When they got there, they found the guards had run off and the large boulder had been rolled back. The tomb was open. Mary, one of the followers, started to cry. She wondered what they had done with the body of her friend Jesus. But then, through her tears of sadness and of grief, she saw someone. He called out to her, Mary. It was Jesus, resurrected, alive again. Suddenly her tears of sadness were transformed into tears of joy. For Jesus was risen. Jesus was alive. The bad news was now good news because hope was restored. And Jesus told his followers to go everywhere into the world, to tell the good news to everyone. Hope and new life was restored again. For Christians, Good Friday is a special time as they remember what Jesus did on that cross. It is good news for Christians because they believe that Jesus' death and then his rising again on Easter Sunday meant that God would forgive them and let them go into heaven. For Christians, it's a celebration of hope, of new life, a chance to have their relationship with God restored. Let's pause to ponder. What gives you hope at Easter? What good news could you share with other people around at Easter time? And what things around us need to be restored to bring hope and good news to our school, to our friends, to our family, to our communities? I'm going to pray a prayer, a special prayer for Easter that talks about the change from bad to good news and the start of new life. 
If you want to make this your prayer, you can by joining in with me. The words will appear on the screen in a moment. Let us pray. The darkest of days transformed to the brightest light. The most dreadful end became the most beautiful beginning. The bad news fades to reveal the good news of hope everlasting. Thank you, Lord, for the wonder of Easter. Amen.